This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and look at the last little bit of our ratio analysis uh, before we go through and, and think about anything else, uh, which is looking at the investor ratios. So if you look at the, the financial press uh, in the UK, one of the big global financial press papers it is the Financial Times. Uh, if you look at the Financial Times, if you have investments and shares, you'll see a lot of these ratios and these figures quoted next to your, your, your listed companies. OK, so these are ratios that are specifically relevant to an investor, somebody who owns shares within the business. And if you own shares within a business, the two things that you are concerned with are so what, you own a share. You don't pretend you do. OK. Uh, what would you want from that share? What would you want to see listed? So yeah, it has a share price, doesn't it? So you want to see that share price grow. Excellent. And um, what's the return that you get if you invest in shares? Excellent. A dividend, isn't it? Okay. So you're looking there at dividends and you're looking there at a bit of share price capital growth. Okay. So the first two ratios we look at are referred to as the dividend cover and the dividend yield. OK, uh, dividend cover, first of all, allows us to see um, say at us, I'm talking about shareholders, to see how safe your dividends are. OK, obviously, the more profits that a company has available, the more likely you will receive a dividend and the more secure that dividend payment is. So what you've got there is your dividend cover is measured by a number of times. It takes your profit for the year and divides it by the dividends. Profit for the year comes from your statement of profit or loss. Dividends will come from your statement of changes in equity. OK, obviously, the higher the figure, the safer your dividends are. Just be careful, however, uh, in order to pay a dividend, you need distributable profits. So you would need to check in the real world that there are sufficient distributable profits. And also, you will need to check that you have, most importantly, cash. OK, yeah, remember, profit does not necessarily equal cash, does it? Uh, but here we're focusing upon it on a profit basis. OK, uh, so even though you have an IP dividend cover, uh, maybe you don't have sufficient amounts of cash to go through and pay it. So, so just bear that in mind. Uh, if we look at your dividend yield, uh, that looks at a return that you get for every one dollar invested. So you can see how well one share has performed against maybe an other share that you have of your investments. Okay, so it's looking at a relative return, a relative return on the amount that you've invested. So it's a percentage because it is relative. You take your dividends and divide that by your share price. OK, uh, so it will need to be your dividend per share divided by your your price per share, wouldn't it? Uh, again, bits and pieces to consider there. It's not really useful for a comparison this year to last year for your company. Uh, why why is that the case because everything else is given a comparability year on year why not your dividend yield but the reason why is because it just looks at the return on your dividend doesn't it it ignores any capital growth you know you could have a dividend yield of say half a percent okay uh, so you've got there half a cent for every dollar that you've invested not that much really is it you, know, you could get more money just about uh, by putting your money in the bank and getting an interest return, couldn't you? But even though we've got a half a percent dividend yield, maybe the share price is double. That might make you think again, mightn't it? Yes, yeah, so the issue that you have there is that the dividend yield ignores capital growth. So it's only really good uh, for, for looking at things, if you like, this year. OK, excellent. Uh, the other one that we're going to just touch upon, uh, we're not going to touch upon earnings per share because we've dealt with that in, in a separate chapter. The other one that you have there is a price earnings ratio. Uh, and that's a really important ratio when you're comparing entity to entity. Because what you've got is it looks and allows an investor to see how confident the market is in the company's future performance. So one of the issues that we have with all our ratios is it, it's looking that way, isn't it? It's looking backwards. We want to look forward. We want, we want to see what's going to happen into the future, don't we? Okay. So the price earnings ratio helps us. Why? Well, what it does is it takes your price per share divides by your earnings per share. So effectively, 
what it does, it looks at the number of times an investor would be prepared to pay to get this year's earnings, isn't it? Okay, so if you have a price earnings ratio of five, it means your price is five times more than the earnings per share. So you'll be prepared to pay five times this year's earnings to get yourself that share. Okay, now surely the more times that you will be prepared to pay to get those earnings, then that must mean that things are going to be looking good in the future. Now, why would you pay a lot to get a small level of earnings? Okay. The reason why, because those earnings are going to grow. And as earnings grow, you get more profitable, there's potential for more dividends, and there's potential for more capital growth, isn't there? As those profits get reinvested in your positive MPV projects. So it's a really good indicator to think about the future. Now, you could go through and take any of, of the banks, any of the large listed banks, Barclays, HSBC, uh, Lloyds, and you can compare their price earnings ratio because all those banks are all of different sizes and all of different profitability levels. Uh, it's difficult to decide which one to invest within. But what you can do is you can look at the price earnings ratio and see which one is the higher. And the higher one will indicate which business the market has the most confidence in. Because the investors are prepared to pay more to get those earnings than they are for some of the other entities. Okay, so it's a really, really useful ratio. I believe, with regard to your investor ratios. Now, it's not a huge area of the syllabus. It is new. Uh, you do build upon it a little bit when you move into F3. We spoke about dividend yield, but we also then in F3 start to look at what is return or referred to as total shareholder return, which incorporates dividend yield or dividend growth and also capital growth, whereby dividend yield just looks at your, your dividend and the return that it gives you. Total shareholder return try to incorporate some capital growth within there as well. But for now, make sure you're happy with the four ratios. So we've got dividend cover, dividend yield, price earnings ratio, and your earnings per share, okay? Make sure you're happy with the calculations and make sure you're happy with what each of those figures actually shows you, okay? Uh, we'll go through, see an example or so, and then we've got the limitations, but then that's it. You're so close to the end of the syllabus. It's within touching distance. Just contain that excitement for a couple more videos and I'll see you in the next session.